My name is Abdul Fadi, and this is how I found the truth. Truth is, you know, growing with a Muslim, I never ever uh, thought of Jesus as any special. I mean, d despite the fact that the Quran uh, today, when you look back and you say, wow, I mean, is calling him the word of God. It's calling him the spirit of God, uh, his virgin birth. You know, uh, he even created from mud or clay shapes of birds and breathed life into it. I mean, you don't think about these things. You feel like, oh, he's just a prophet, you know, no big deal. All prophets have their own miracles and uh, this just happened to be his miracle. Muhammad was the special one. He is the one that was sent to all mankind. He is God's final messenger, the seal of the prophets, with the final message, the Quran, and the Islam is the religion that he brought to mankind, the final religion. So you get locked into this finality and you do not really focus a lot on Jesus. I finished my um, uh, schooling uh, in college with the engineering degree and then my father encouraged me to consider a graduate degree. I came to the States for the first time. In fact, that was the first time I've ever left my, left basically my hometown. God was sovereign over all of this and it's a really divine appointment if you wish. I came to the States thinking that I speak English very well and I have been studying English not only at the school, but also every summer I will take advantage of the fact that the British consulate have an English institute. So I would go there and study and practice conversations and until I came to the U.S. and little that I knew that the U.S. doesn't speak English at all. You know, they speak Americanese. And I was embarrassed a couple of times with these conversations. So I went to my teacher and I says, you keep telling me I'm doing well at the English Center, but I don't think I'm doing well. And here is why. So she said, well, we have a solution to that. Usually every uh, uh, basically major university will have a student, uh, international student office. You know, so once you go to ours, and tell them that you're interested in befriending a person or a family, and they will team you up with someone. Now, little that I knew that a lot of these, uh, uh, you know, uh, entities are actually Christian ministries, and uh, I ended up basically finding one called Friends of Internationals, and I uh, filled out my application. Within a couple of weeks, I received the letter introducing a family to me. Their love, their passion, you know, to serve the Lord, of course, through me. I didn't know these phrases back then, uh, how they embraced me, how they took the time to uh, take me to places. And I remember uh, when I graduated from the English uh, Center and they took the day off, it was a Friday, and came just to watch me. And I was touched by that, really. And uh, I can see that their love is genuine. During the course of that relationship, I uh, was invited to Thanksgiving meal at their home, met their parents, met their neighbors, met their church uh, friends, and um, you can tell that there's something special about that, all of them. That they didn't look your typical American or typical Christian, uh, the one that I uh, you know, had this presupposition about. And then they began to ask me about my faith and they shared their journey to Christ and I was confused about why would anyone uh, say that they are followers of Jesus when in fact they are Christians anyway. So some things were not clear, but I can tell there has been some changes in their life that made them look different. And I, quite frankly, I didn't know what to make out of all of this, but the seed was planted. It took about 12 years journey for me uh, to know more about Christ through born again believers. At the end of the day, I discovered that I really had no solid foundation to stand on. I could not refute many of their arguments or even questions. And then finally, I agreed to go to church uh, for the first time in May of 2001. And uh, when September 11 happened, I was troubled by what happened. I knew why the hijackers did what they did. At some point back in the 70s, I also wanted to become a jihadi, to go to Afghanistan, to fight and die as a martyr uh, because it's the highest degree of honor that you can shed your blood for Allah and fight for his cause and you'll have all of your sins forgiven and you'll go straight to paradise because that's the only way you can have assurance of your salvation in Islam. Other than that, you have to depend on your works and nobody knows what's gonna happen. I was afraid of going to the church that weekend and uh, my friends convinced me that it is really a good thing to go. Don't worry, no one is gonna bother you. I went and I heard the message from the Sermon on the Mount when Jesus says, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you. And I, I reflected back on my 
own relationship with the first family and other families and I can tell now why they were so kind, gentle, loving because this is the model that was set for them. A couple of months later, in November 2001, I accepted Christ as Lord and Savior. I hesitated uh, at the beginning how to tell my family because I knew it's not going to be taken lightly. After I accepted Christ, I lost my marriage. I almost lost my son. I ended up losing my job. September 11 destroyed the economy at that time. Losing your income resulted in me losing my car, losing my house, and I found myself with nothing over the course of three months. And it was the most terrible thing I've went through. And yet, um, God was responding in amazing ways. People offered me to live with them. I remember one time I was so uh, hungry and I didn't know where to go and find food and how even to pay for it. And a neighbor next door who have never met me in their life, I don't even know if they're believers, knocked on my door and said, hey, we have leftover barbecue that we just did. Would you like some? I, I mean, I looked at it and said, wow, I mean, that's amazing. And things like this begin to uh, make you realize He's there. He hears you and He hears your cries and He's there to protect you, but He does it His way. Uh, he doesn't want you to do it your way because I, I had a lot of pride coming from that background. And the Lord says, well, in, in, in when you serve me, we're going to get rid of that pride. So let's start with that first. And that's how it went. When I accepted, uh, uh, you know, the Lord, I initially, and it's, it's kind of uh, interesting, Almost every Muslim I, I talk to who have become a follower of Jesus, they want to distance themselves from other Muslims right away. And they want to associate with Westerners or non-Arabs because they feel like that's a, a, an intimidating culture and an environment. And that's what I did. I said, Lord, you know, I want to serve you, but I want nothing to do with Muslims or Saudis. And the Lord says, we'll see about that. He began to prepare me uh, to do ministry to Muslims and to Saudis. Now, little that I knew that the satellite programming was one of the perfect ways to get in their living room and speak to them. I still remember people tell me, you know, when we saw your testimony, we were blown away by the fact that a Saudi can appear on TV and share their testimony. And then slowly and gradually, I start to discover the power of media, the power of social media, and now I am thankful to tell you that I have so many connections in there. I know so many believers in there and um, we communicate a lot and it's almost like I am with them. And uh, even though sometimes many of them want to leave, I encourage them to stay because God is using them there. So. The Word of God is the best place for you to go. Enjoy reading just the Bible cover to cover. See for yourself what happened to Adam and Eve. See for yourself God's covenant with them. Read the Gospel. See what Jesus thought, why He came to die for your sin. I'm glad that you are taking this journey. I know it's risky, but one thing I can assure you of, Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except by me. No one goes to heaven without Jesus. You're on the right track. All you need now is to trust in Him and follow Him, and He will lead you to the straight path that you and I, as Muslims, used to pray and ask God for that straight path daily, 17 times a day. If I'm following the straight path, why do I need to ask Him to guide me to it? And I found Jesus, and now, you know what? I don't even ask Him anymore because He is already leading me, and He will lead you as well.